Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera <clears throat> where today, instead of my usual camera or camera repair video uh, I thought I'd make a video about my first film camera Now those of you who saw my uh, Nikon FE video uh, toward the end of that video I brought out this old camera for a moment uh, to show it and I mentioned that this was my first uh, 35mm film camera uh, and so it is I've had this camera now for 36 years, and 36 years ago when I got it, uh, America was an interesting place. Uh, Ronald Reagan was uh, president, uh, the top rock band was uh, Van Halen, uh, the top pop stars were Michael Jackson, Madonna, and Cyndi Lauper, uh, the top movies were uh, Ghostbusters, uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and Purple Rain. It was a really wonderful year in America, a very optimistic year. Uh, the economy was doing well, and it, it just seemed like a, a good time to be alive and to be a young person living in America. And this camera reminds me of, of those times. But uh, before uh, the 1980s was the 1970s. And in the 1970s, I was a kid living in the middle of nowhere in New Mexico. And New Mexico is not a place that I liked then, and it's not a place which I like now. A lot of people will say, well, New Mexico is a beautiful place with the majestic scenery and all that, but places which are fun to visit are usually not fun places to live. Uh, the, the novelty of, uh, of the scenery or the, these kind of things quickly wears off when you, when you actually have to begin living in such a place. What I disliked most about New Mexico was the lack of color. Uh, everything was brown. Uh, when I say that, I wrote... I remember a BBC documentary I watched about James Revelius, who was an English photographer, and his complaint about a shooting in England where everything was green and how difficult it made photography. So I could understand his viewpoint and, what it, and his opinion of living in a monochromatic landscape. In New Mexico, everything was brown. Uh, the sand, the dirt, the tumbleweeds, the dead grass, the stray dogs, the houses were painted brown. All the people were brown. Uh, it didn't matter what race or nationality you were. The New Mexico sun is harsh, and it turns people brown quickly. It was just a, a place which I didn't like, and the, the, mainly because of the lack of color. Uh, the only escape I had from the color brown was the school library. And the library had a really good collection of books and magazines, and in particular the National Geographic magazines. And I would spend hours uh, paging through those magazines, looking at the beautiful photos of... Uh, tropical jungles and the, the northwestern forests, the, the, the seas and oceans, the South Pacific Islands, the beautiful cities in Europe, uh, places which were really amazing to me and which I had no other way to, to see. Uh, we had a television in those days, but we only got two television stations and our TV was black and white. So, And in those days, uh, pretty much the only thing which, which came on TV were like game shows and soap operas and the evening news. So uh, TV wasn't really an escape for me, so, uh, but National Geographic magazines were. Uh, the librarian took pity on me when they were uh, redoing the library, and when they'd cleaned it out, uh, she gave me a couple of big boxes of old National Geographic magazines, so many that it took two trips to get them all home. And then in my spare time uh, or free time, and I had a lot of it when I was a kid, uh, I read through these magazines. And one thing that these magazines had in the back cover in those days were uh, advertisements for the Canon camera company, and in particular, the Canon A1 SLR camera, which I really, really wanted. Uh, the advertisement for the camera was very interesting. It had a, a photo of the camera, and the A1 was this really cool black camera with these interesting angular lines and these uh, red LED uh, numbers inside the viewfinder, which were just like the, the red LED numbers on my, my digital Star Wars watch at the time. And uh, surrounding the uh, photo of the camera were uh, photos which were supposedly taken with it. Uh, I, I remember uh, like tropical birds and flowers and things like that. And I remember the word which Canon used to describe the camera. It was uh, hexaphoto cybernetic. I had no idea what that word meant, but it was the second longest word I knew at the time, after supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. 
And as I looked at the camera and the magazines and the advertisements, I thought it would be such a wonderful thing to have a Canon A1 camera and travel around the world and take these amazingly colorful and beautiful photographs. But uh, a Canon A1 in those days cost more than $300, and my allowance at the time was $1 a week. And with that dollar, I would go to the uh, store and I would get a comic book and three candy bars, and that would leave me seven cents left over. So at $52 per year, it would take me more than six years to save enough money to buy a Canon A1 camera, and I would have to do without comic books or candy bars, and that was like too much of a sacrifice. So, so uh, it, it only remained a dream for me, something that I could fantasize about. So anyway, uh, a few years later, uh, I found myself uh, out leaving my hometown. Like many young people who don't like their hometown or home state, uh, I left. And like uh, a large percentage of these young people, I found myself in California, uh, in Southern California to be exact. And Southern California was a really wonderful place to live uh, when, you're, when you're young and optimistic and energetic. There were so many things to see and do. Uh, the scenery was quite interesting. You had everything. You had, you had the beaches, you had mountains, you had deserts. Anything you wanted to, to go and see, uh, you could see. Uh, unfortunately, I found in those times that to see all these things, you need a car. And when I first arrived, I didn't have a car. So uh, uh, maybe uh, it sounds like I'm digressing here, talking about cars instead of cameras, but uh, bear with me for a, a few moments. So anyway, I needed a car, and I didn't have a lot of money to buy one. I managed to put together about $300, which uh, even back then wouldn't buy you much of a car. A friend of mine recommended that I go to uh, the police auction, which was uh, uh, held at the uh, city impound lot, and I could probably find a car there for a good price. So uh, when the auction day came around, I, I went to the auction, and they had all kinds of cars and motorcycles, even bicycles, all kinds of stuff. And uh, with the money I had, they had a few clunkers in the back, uh, which, were, which I could afford. And I ended up settling on this really uh, ugly-looking car, a 1971 Mustang Grande. And I, I chose this car because it had uh, new tires on it, and it started quickly, it didn't make any smoke, and the air conditioning was still cool or cold. And the price was only $200. So I paid the $200, I got a temporary registration, and I drove away in the car. It was a really hideous green color, and it had been hit in the back, and the trunk was held shut with bungee cords. Uh, the floor on the back was uh, full of uh, old clothes, which were really moldy. The car had been sat sitting in the impound yard with the windows down for I don't know how long. Uh, there were a few uh, freebies in the car. The first thing I noticed is it was infested with cockroaches. And this didn't bother me because my apartment was also infested with cockroaches. So there was, I didn't have to worry about spreading them from my a car to my house. All that would do would be like diversify the gene pool. The next thing I found were a couple of uh, film canisters in the door panel uh, with about $40 worth of Susan B. Anthony dollars in them, which was really cool. That uh, increased my net worth by like 40%. And I got to cleaning out the car, and in the trunk I found a couple of boxes full of uh, Hustler and Penthouse magazines which was a great find because I, I was young and single and had no girlfriend, so I could put these to good use. And uh, upon further searching throughout the car, I found an old uh, uh, vinyl bag, and in that bag was this camera with this uh, Nikkor lens, uh, an MD-12 motor drive, and some other camera accessories. And to me, uh, finding uh, this camera and all the stuff in the car was like winning the lottery. First, because uh, at the time, uh, these were quite valuable. I could easily have taken the, the, the camera and lens and other uh, things to a pawn shop and got maybe $250 for them. So that would be like getting the car for free and you know $50 to boot. But uh, as I was looking at the camera, uh, that, uh, that inspiration I got from reading the National Geographic magazines and the Canon A1 advertisements came back to me. And instead of selling the camera, I decided to go out and use it. So uh, since I still had $100 left over of my uh, car fund and $40 in Susan B. Anthony dollars, uh, I went to a bookstore and I got uh, a book on photography. And I went to the 7-Eleven and I got some film and some batteries. 
and I started taking pictures. Uh, this camera had a kind of a big influence on my life and uh, the way it would eventually turn out. Uh, having this camera and wanting to use it uh, inspired me to go places which I might not have otherwise gone. Uh, on my days off, I would get in my car with my camera and film and, and a cheap tripod, and I would go different places. I would drive up to Big Bear and uh, Lake Arrowhead to take pictures of the forests and the waterfalls and lakes. Uh, or I would drive out to the high desert to get pictures of the Joshua trees and the old buildings along the old Route 66. I did some shooting in uh, street shooting in Hollywood, uh, on Sunset Boulevard and Hollywood Boulevard. Those were kind of rougher places back then than they are today, although they're probably still rough today. So uh, uh, this camera inspired me to go out and see things and do things. I was always looking for something new to see. Uh, eventually, uh, uh, I was motivated enough. Uh, I got to spend some time in Europe and uh, do some shooting there uh, in Southern Europe. And wherever I went through the rest of my life, I always carried a, a camera with me. I've never been a fully professional photographer. I've always done it as kind of uh, something on the side, uh, something which I have fun doing and which uh, sometimes makes me some money. Uh, if it were a full-time job, maybe it wouldn't be as interesting as it is, uh, as it or as it was. But uh, uh, this camera is what started it all. I, I've shot a lot of film with this camera, and uh, back 36 years ago, in, in 1984, uh, it looked uh, in, in, like new, but uh, it doesn't look like new anymore. But it still works just as well today as it did back then. Uh, yeah, it, it's really interesting the effect that uh, certain objects or things can have on a person's life. If it's a camera or a car or a book or, or who knows what else it is. But uh, uh, photography and, and cameras, yeah, it, it, they're just wonderful things, which, uh, which I enjoy. I guess I owe my early interest to National Geographic and the Canon company. And yes, Canon, I eventually did buy one of your A1 cameras, though it was quite old by the time I got it. And it was quite a good camera. I had a lot of fun with it, but uh, uh, I didn't keep it. Uh, but I have kept the. I have managed to hold on to this FE for all this time. Anyway, uh, that's the story of my first film camera and how I got into uh, film photography. I hope it wasn't uh, too boring. Uh, I plan to put up more videos about uh, cameras and uh, photography in the future. So uh, if you're interested, uh, please subscribe. And. Uh, if you're interested in buying a vintage Japanese camera, uh, I sell them in my Etsy and eBay stores. Uh, please check the description below the video for links to my stores. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you tune in again. Uh, thanks for watching.